Out of all the LJN wrestling games released during the 90s, I probably played WWF Raw the most. Super WrestleMania and Royal Rumble were good, and WWF Raw may have been more of the same, but the amount of wrestlers and match types available kept me hooked to this game for hours upon hours. It isn't a perfect wrestling game by any stretch of the imagination, but it's the perfect LJN wrestling game. It was also the last LJN wrestling game. The version of WWF Raw I owned was the Super Nintendo release, though the game was also available for the Mega Drive, the 32X, the Game Gear and the Game Boy. I've never played the Game Boy, Game Gear or 32X versions until making this video, so this will be interesting for me. Let's start off with a look at the Super Nintendo version, the version I'm most familiar with. So we get this intro video here where the developers try to recreate the actual introduction to the Monday Night Raw TV show, and given the limitations here, they did a decent job. The classic Raw theme is also used during the introduction. Getting into the game modes, there is quite a selection available here, making this the definitive 16-bit LJN WWF wrestling game. I do prefer Midway's WrestleMania the Arcade game. If I had a choice, I'd always choose that over Raw. But for those who enjoy these older style of WWF games, you can't really go wrong with Raw on the Super Nintendo or Sega Mega Drive or Genesis. Before looking at each match type, let's take a look at the roster. WWF Raw was released towards the end of 1994 and the roster does extremely well in reflecting this era of the World Wrestling Federation. The roster includes Bam Bam Bigelow, Razor Ramon, Lex Luger, Doink, Shawn Michaels, The 123 Kid, Diesel, Owen Hart, Luna Vachon, Bret Hart, The Undertaker and Yokozuna. Notable here is the inclusion of Luna Vachon, the very first playable female wrestler in a WWF game. Stars making their WWF game debut in Raw include Doink, The 123 Kid, Owen Hart, Diesel and Luna Vachon, so you're getting quite a lot of new wrestlers to play with here. Like previous LJN WWF games, a wrestler's theme music will play on the character select screen. And a nice addition here is the ability to change wrestler attributes. You need to know a specific code for each wrestler in order to do this and your changes will be reset after turning off the game. WWF Raw on all consoles has a mysterious secret character. It's believed that the character is a placeholder for Quang, who is a secret character in the 32X version of the game, but not in the Super Nintendo or Genesis versions. In order to use this secret mystery character, you'll need to use a cheat code that's only usable with a third party cheat device. Normally these devices are built into emulators so you can try this one for yourself. Anyway, here's the code for the SNES version. And here is the strange mystery character. It looks like Kenny Omega, travelling back in time here to compete in 1994 WWF. This is actually the Shawn Michaels model with darker colours, but it really does look like the cleaner himself. The mystery character doesn't have a character select image, he doesn't have a theme song, and this is what happens when you win a match with this mysterious character. In the Genesis version, the mystery character uses the Razor Ramon model, again with different darker colours. He looks a little more like NWO Scott Hall. Anyway, that's the roster out of the way. We will look at Quang a little later on the 32X version. Game modes we have then are your standard one-on-one -on -one match, tag team matches, Survivor Series matches, the Royal Rumble, Bedlam matches and endurance matches. One-on-one, -on -one, tag team and bedlam matches have a sub-menu where you can choose between competing in a single match, a brawl or a tournament. 
A brawl is no pinfalls or submissions, you win by depleting your opponent's health bar, and the tournament mode is self-explanatory, you don't unlock anything for completing tournaments. The Survivor Series matches play the exact same way as they did in Super WrestleMania. You can press the select button to change what superstar stands on the apron. And yeah, it's a Survivor Series elimination match, not much more to say. The Royal Rumble mode was a selling point for the WWF Royal Rumble video game released the previous year, so it's good that this mode returns for WWF Raw with an updated roster. I spent probably the most time playing Royal Rumble matches and Survivor Series matches when I owned this game as a kid. Next we have Bedlam matches, a new addition here which is basically a tornado tag match, great for two player co-op. Finally there's the raw endurance match, kind of like a survivor series match here however you can set a handicap from 1 to 6 wrestlers so you can try to beat a string of wrestlers with only one guy. All in all there's plenty to do here for a wrestling game from 1994, again it isn't perfect but it's the best you can do with these kind of WWF games. The in-ring action is unchanged from Royal Rumble, Super WrestleMania and Rage in the Cage, at least on the surface. It uses the classic tug of war button mashing system to perform moves, simply lock up and hit a button over and over to try and win the lock up and perform a move. There are new moves added from the lockup however giving a bit more variety here. Special moves are performed when your opponent's health is in the red and you press the R button either repeatedly from a lockup or simply tapping it when your opponent is in the right position. The big addition here though when it comes to moves are the mega moves. Each wrestler has a unique over the top move that they can only perform with a specific button combination. Some of these are still difficult to pull off simply because the animations beforehand leave you vulnerable to attacks and also your positioning has to be perfect. If you're a slight step off the move won't work. Still a nice addition here, a little unnecessary but at least they tried something new. So here's the Sega Genesis or the Mega Drive version of WWF Raw. I didn't own this release as a kid but it plays pretty much identically to the Super Nintendo version. You will notice the colours are much better on Nintendo's console and the sound is also better too on the SNES. Not much else to say here really, if you have to choose one go with the Super Nintendo version, you don't gain anything really from the Mega Drive release. Ok let's look at some of the more quirky releases of WWF Raw. We will save the 32x version until last seeing as it should be the definitive version of the game. Let's first have a go at the Game Boy release. Now I give them credit here, they tried but I found this pretty much unplayable. You've got single, tag and survivor series matches here with the options of doing brawls and tournaments too. The roster has been cut down here with Luna Vachon, Owen Hart, 123 Kid and Bam Bam Bigelow all missing in action. Gameplay wise, yeah, have a look. The game is super super slow. Lockups too are tedious, if you don't pick easy difficulty you have to really really button mash to win the tug of war lockup systems here and honestly I was worried about damaging my d-pad and buttons here with the beating my controller took trying to pull off a single move and this was before I realised I could assign turbo buttons but anyway punches, kicks and moves take off a minimal amount of damage resulting in a long and boring drawn out match. Add in the fact that you only have two buttons here and the game looking the way it does and yeah not a great experience at all. There are much better WWF games for the Game Boy, give this one a hard pass. I didn't feel like continuing on here, it was a miserable experience and you guys know me by now, I try to find the best in things and I hate to be negative, I tried to stick it out, I'm not going to continue on. WWF Raw on the Game Boy is, in a word, shit. Let's hope the Game Gear version is better. 
So I was expecting a different game altogether here on the Sega handheld, but it's pretty much more of the same. WWF Raw on the Game Gear is better than the Game Boy version, but that isn't saying much. Of course, you have color here, and man, it really helps when playing this game. Wrestlers look way more distinctive here, so yeah, already an easy bonus point for the Game Gear release. We also have two wrestlers in this version not found in any other release of WWF Raw. Macho Man Randy Savage and Crush, so again, easy bonus points for the Game Gear version. The modes are exactly the same, even the presentation is the exact same and the gameplay is the exact same. I did find it slightly easier to win the tug of war lockups in this version though, and the colours really help make the wrestlers and the ring pop out in comparison to the Game Boy version, but again, playing the game just isn't a great experience I'm afraid. It's the same slow gameplay, matches are just not that fun and it's a chore to go from bell to bell. If you have to choose one, go with the Game Gear version. Randy Savage's inclusion here makes it a winner for sure, but I'd still try to avoid both games and just stick to WWF Superstars on the Game Boy. Right, main event time, this should be the best, most definitive, most complete version of WWF Raw, the Sega 32X release. The Sega 32X was another add-on for the Mega Drive, coming after the Sega CD while acting as life support for the Mega Drive. It was a flop, the video game industry was moving into the next generation and the 32X was this weird add-on that hardly anyone bothered with, it just got left behind. With this in mind, the Sega 32X should be the best, most advanced hardware available that could run WWF Raw, and yes, I know many Super Nintendo games and even base Mega Drive games looked better, but still, let's just buy into the hype for a moment and see what we have here. Okay, so the game opens up with pretty much the same intro as the SNES and Mega Drive versions, with ever so slight changes and some new music. When we get into the mode select, everything is intact here, just a little harder to read. The character select screen has been completely changed, the whole roster is here with better quality images, some even having brand new character images, and we also have new renditions of each wrestler's theme song. They do sound slightly better in my opinion than the Super Nintendo version, but this will come down to personal preference. Have a listen. When you get into a match, the first thing you will notice is the weird ring colours. For some reason, the developers went with a purple and pink ring apron and turnbuckle pads here, a really odd choice. Apart from this, everything looks cleaner, character models have more vibrant colours, the audience looks better, and yeah, that's it really. The steel chair that was seen on the outside has been replaced by a WWF Raw sign, though it acts in the exact same way as a chair. The commentary team changes too between Jerry Lawler and Vince McMahon to Gorilla Monsoon and Stephanie Wyand, so it seems that the changes here are all on surface level, there isn't enough here that makes this a definitive upgrade. The new moves, in all honesty, are pretty badly animated too. Also, it might just be me, but this ring definitely looks smaller too, maybe that's more of a resolution thing though. Quang is the final wrestler you will face in tournament mode, but you can unlock him by pressing down A and B at the character select screen. Is he worth it? Or rather, is he worth going out and finding the 32X version for? Absolutely not. It's cool that one of these LJN games finally has a hidden wrestler, but Quang? The 32X version here was released in 1995, around 6 months after the original release on Super Nintendo and Genesis, and even if we consider that this game was in development during 1994, there were still options here for different superstars to include. Jeff Jarrett, Mabel, Tatanka, Rick Martel. Quang would have been my last choice here, but it is what it is. I think it's cool because of the novelty of having a hidden wrestler here, but that's it. He wouldn't be one of my first choices when playing the game. 
There's another cheat code that unlocks another weird mystery wrestler though. Again, this can only be done with a cheat device or an emulator that has cheat options built in, but here's the code. This one is a little weird. We thought that Kenny Omega and NWO Scott Hall were placed in the Super Nintendo and Genesis versions as placeholders for Quang, so it's odd that this game here has a mystery character. The character model again uses Shawn Michaels as its base, this time with bright yellow tights and lighter hair. Every now and then the model will quickly change during a move and then go back to normal. You can see like his hair changing and stuff. Also the character's name at the top of the screen has been replaced by a broken health meter. Really odd but still cool to see. So I have to be honest here, I still prefer the Super Nintendo version. The main reason, not being the sound, not being the gameplay, the purple ring, no it's the controller. WWF Raw on the 32X does support the Genesis 6 button controller and while I did emulate the game here I still used a Sega 6 button USB controller and it just didn't feel right. This is likely due to how I played the Super Nintendo mostly as a kid and just being used to the controller layout. Totally a personal thing here that many people will not have a problem with, but it did bug me. Also, there just aren't enough reasons to go with the more expensive 32X version over the Super Nintendo release here. One hidden character and some small presentation changes aren't really enough to justify picking up the 32X release over the Super Nintendo version. The 32X game does look nice and new moves would have been a great selling point, but neither the presentation or new moves make that much of a difference. A shame then, I was hoping to find some good stuff here while checking out the handheld ports and the 32X port of RAW, but in the end I feel like I've been playing the best version all along in the Super Nintendo without even knowing it. After looking at all these releases of WWF Raw and deciding that the Super Nintendo is the way to go here, do I still recommend the game? Yes, I do. The LJN or Acclaim 16-bit WWF games may not hold up well today, but this was the peak of WWF games up until 1995's WrestleMania the arcade game. Super WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, even Rage in the Cage, these were the games that most of us played to get our WWF fix. When WWF Raw came along, it was like the greatest hits put on the one cartridge with the addition of an updated roster and those wacky mega moves. I agree it was time for the WWF to move on from these types of games and bring something new to the table by the time WWF Raw came out, kinda like how 2K have ran the current WWE games into the ground. So WWF Raw was kind of the farewell to those types of wrestling games as we moved into the next generation. Most modern fans won't look twice at WWF Raw, it will be way too dated and basic for newer fans of wrestling and gaming, but if you played these games as a kid, and I know many of you did, you know the drill, it didn't get better than playing these WWF games with a friend, playing Royal Rumbles and setting up your own Survivor Series teams, things like that. So yeah, for those who haven't played WWF Raw in a long time, it's still fun to go back to, and for more modern fans, give it a go with a friend, you may be pleasantly surprised. But remember, you don't need to add life support to your Mega Drive or Genesis or overpay for a rare version, just stick to the Super Nintendo release. <laughs>